prelude to home lab. What do we mean by that? The primary focus of this video is setting up a Kubernetes rancher environment using K3S. So, and then we're trying to live the dream of Kubernetes where you can be able to relatively quickly deploy apps using Helm or maybe even the Rancher UI. And uh, that's, that's the goal. Now, the reality is setting up a home lab can be either frustrating or fun. And we want it to be fun for you, not frustrating like it was for us. So we kind of joke around. We've got a live, we, we pretty much shot the setup live and then chopped it way down. And then I go over it with the narration, trying to add some humor. Um, but the development environment here is two Raspberry Pis, one functioning as the Nginx load balancer and one functioning as the MariaDB um, to help manage uh, the cluster. We've got two master nodes running on 10 year old computers and they uh, have an old version of, or actually they have a Ubuntu 20 on there, uh, but it took some doing to try and figure out the right BIOS setting. We used Rufus to burn the USB stick to boot it and uh, that whole thing can take, and we have another one that we set up Fedora on because it wouldn't take Ubuntu for some reason. And uh, anyways, that, that whole setup, setting up your, which IP addresses you're gonna use, which, um, what your host names are gonna be, we're gonna kind of talk about that in the first half of this video and go through uh, kind of a train wreck and then get ourselves out of it. And then the last half will be setting up uh, Kubernetes and uh, finally Rancher and having success and using the Raspberry Pis uh, as, uh, as external uh, load balancer and database. So I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, two other quick things. Uh, we do have uh, links to the docs and a wiki that uh, I'll provide the link for and there's also more links inside the video. And we've shot everything. It's, we've recorded the stream in 4K. Uh, now, not everything is 4K, uh, we were not set up for that yet, but uh, that way if you do have a good monitor, or sorry, if you do have a 4K monitor, you can, uh, en you can enjoy the whole thing live and not in a squished screen, so that's kind of nice. Well, and then also if you're watching it in uh, HD, we keep the, uh, we keep kind of a, an ongoing zoom in version of the commands that we're running. So best of both worlds. I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks. Trying to set a little ambiance here. We've got an overcast day and uh, it's festive. All right, let's get going. So in this first section, we're going to look at downloading Raspberry Pi OS named Raspbian. Um, we will explore the difference between 32-bit and 64-bit. We're going to look at some of the differences between the older Pies and the newer Pies and discuss the RAM differences and different use cases for setting up a K3S cluster. So I've kind of pre-recorded this. I made a bunch of mistakes. In order to have high availability, you want to have two server nodes, which are usually your masters, and usually they don't do uh, workloads. And then you would have at least one node, which is your worker node. So what I'm starting off here is downloading things. Uh, I'm using Raspberry Pis as my... Uh, Nginx load balancer and as my Maria DB. Raspberry Pi is still used the micro SD. If you're new to the Raspberry Pi universe, you'll want to be aware that the micro SD that you get is important. Um, I'm, I actually made some mistakes with Raspberry Pi because I try to use, you know, the easiest thing to do is just rec go off the recommendations on the raspberrypi.com website. But anyways, I digress. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, you know, the Raspberry Pi OS that uh, 
that they feature is a version of Debian. With that said, uh, what I'm navigating through here is uh, the Raspberry Pis don't only run Linux. Um, they, uh, Microsoft had a version of uh, Microsoft IoT Internet of Things. And uh, I'm just kind of walking you through the more for myself nostalgia just looking at what I had on the drive because I'm getting ready to wipe it and here's that web page um, talking about the Windows IoT core one thing uh, I'll look I'll show you later is um, I didn't realize the new Raspberry Pi 4s were well I did at the time I had forgotten that they're 64 bit so uh, at first I start by burning a 32-bit image to it and I, I think, it, I think it, it still worked for a little bit and I realized that there, you got a 15 watt power issue. So anyways, I ended up not using uh, the Pi 4 that I got for Christmas like a year, last year. <laughs> it's kind of the way it goes with these Pi's. Um, you know, got a lot of projects that just get put on hold. So, but anyways, I can, spoiler alert, I can say that, you know, this use case does work. So, um, you just have to bear through some of my mistakes. So here, what am I showing? Oh yeah, I wanted to try and use Harvester at first. Harvester looks great and I wish I could use it. The computers I was going on, and I'll reference Techno Tim's video a few times in this and link to that in the descriptions. Um, but uh, what I've got here is I had, out of the four, well, yeah, three and a half computers that I try to use that I wanted to use as my nodes for my, uh, for my K3S clusters, um, oh, and here I'm showing the I'm showing the memory. This is my. I, I, I first set this up in the uh, in Microsoft Azure Cloud, and so here I'm going through and I'm installing uh, MariaDB. And uh, I think earlier I had showed that the documentation says that you need to have uh, that they're certified against MariaDB 10.6, and I'm trying 10.5 and. Uh, it at least installed. Um, I haven't gotten there, you know, do anything certification worthy <laughs> on it. But um, the thing is, is you, you'll have to build it yourself if you're going to do MariaDB, at least at this date of recording. Because what they give you on, though, if you had used maybe the Ubuntu version of Raspberry Pi uh, OS, their their distro of that then, then maybe it would have the the repo but it, it did not so here i'm popping on techno tim just to kind of show really where i wanted to start with this video um because one of the things i noticed is like if i had watched his video about like maybe even as little as a year ago at least two years ago i there is still enough developer knowledge that somebody, I wouldn't even say green, just like even a junior level coder, which I still can, I mean, I barely consider myself that, but, um, but it's like, uh, anyway, there, there's still some stuff. It's amazing when you build these videos, how much stuff gets left out, even if you think you're doing great. So, um, and I thought Techno Tim's video was great, but there was still like, how, okay, well, how do you set up the, the DB, which is linked right there at, at the top where I've got, I've got the time code 268, you know, so that's what I'm showing you. I'm showing you at least the first, I'm showing you some of the missing segments. The plan is you would watch Techno Tim's if you're still lost or have errors. I'm trying to make all those mistakes. Actually, I didn't try. I didn't try to make those mistakes, um, but but I made a lot of mistakes, and uh, hopefully hopefully you'll learn from them. So, um, anyways, I'm going through. I'm doing the, the secure installation. 
uh, bit here. Um, so all this code is, it's, it's you know, I, I thought it would be fun to fork its 100 days of home lab and just drop my code in the wiki there. I've, I'm gonna create an issues section and I'll demonstrate a little bit of how, uh, in case you're not used to like a developer workflow of using a version control, I'll demonstrate a little bit of just kind of how to, how to report things, how to talk things in developer speak enough to, to get your question answered. Oh, and here I'm going through a frustrating thing. I don't, I haven't figured out yet. I right click to paste in my terminal window on Windows, just my normal command prompt, and it's just always, well, I'm uh, assist Jason. It always double pastes, I don't understand it. So now I'm going in, I, I'm removing the bind because that way I, uh, so we can uh, re remote into the database, which K3S needs um, from a non-local host. So from outside of the, of the device that we're on, uh, you can remote in, uh, not using root, but using a user that we're gonna create. So now I'm checking the status, making sure it's up, and I'll probably go back and narrate some of that stuff better because I know I'm, uh, I'm trying to create like a live feel of this thing. All right, uh, so yeah, we're going, I'm not sure why I ran it twice. It's, I keep running it over and over again. I don't know. Oh, I wanted to show, okay, so I'm comparing that to the Azure snapshot. You know, this is, this is the original, or, well, not the original. This is a Raspberry Pi 2, which only had, I guess, a, one gig of RAM. For some reason, I thought it had more. Um, I guess that was only the, I lose track. So, uh, somewhere I'll map out uh, my domains, the, uh, the, the 192.168.0.25 is what I'm using for my uh, load balancer. And I think here is where I began making my first mistake because I didn't, I didn't, I thought I could keep, just keep it all in my head. <laughs> I mean, I wrote down the numbers, but um, the 131 has an older version of Pi, which I, I, I see this is where I have some projects still on my pies so I didn't want to like wipe them so I'll try and compile a prerequisite uh, list things I should have done just essentially a little server map which IP addresses you're using to build your cluster and then also um, host names and how, making sure that you can SSH into everything from one computer but anyways, I didn't want to wipe them because they, well, like I don't want to lose the state of my projects and I don't have backups. I mean, that's the whole point of setting up a proper home lab so that you can not just lose your work and just, okay. So finally got Pi going. I had accidentally, so anyways, I, I want to pause it here for a second. All right, so I had my old, uh, so is that you can't download Nginx and I'm, I'll run into that problem here in the future. You can't download Nginx unless you're like on the latest distribution or Raspbian. I mean, I guess I could have done a pseudo update and, and uh, upgrade and distro upgrade. But of course, if someone's watching this and they don't know what the lingo just meant, then I'm not doing the purpose of the tutorial. I'm trying to like, make the mistakes that you know somebody not not fluent in linux would would make so anyways so when I, this first part here that's a lot of my nightmare and uh, I, unfortunately i was like oh i just set up this home lab one day <laughs> it could have i think i set up my home lab in the cloud faster than and that's, that's coming for off of a, a few failed attempts at setting up Kubernetes previously and a bunch of other stuff. But I set up 
just prepare yourself for like maybe a relaxing weekend. <laughs> like I, I tend to just charge and um, <laughs> and you get the result of that. So uh, if I had paced myself more and try to be have fun with it and maybe put on some music in the background, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't have been such a frustrating experience. But um, anyways, I'll, I'll keep playing here. So we got, um, so right. Okay, right, this is because this is the old, so I, I love being able to do apt now and have to not have to do apt-get. So I don't know the history of that. So, but anyways, so I, this is me wondering why in the world it can't, I'm just trying to simply find out. <laughs> Grr. I just wanted to see if I could run an older version of uh, of Nginx on here. And see, look, I'm, I'm all the way back on Wheezy on this thing, which is older than even SteamOS. Because um, at least, it, at least the other one that I had was on Jesse. But anyways, yeah, you're gonna hit mirror issues, of course. Um, I mean, I figured out how to bypass all that stuff on Steam OS, and I've got some guides on Steam about how to how to lock it because they've uh, they've uh, deprecated that, and there's still like an archive somewhere that's legit. Um, and I, if, if you need links to that stuff or whatever, just hit me up. All right, so I'm going through. Uh, uh, in the beginning of the tutorial, um, and you know, I was doing it all live. I I uh, was using root, and then later I switched to using the uh, user space and using uh, sudo. So that's why that's why I leave the sudo commands in there because that's the way I'm preferring to do it going forward with these tutorials. <laughs> and, I don't know. Some stuff I think is secure, and it's not really secure. So. Uh, anyways, la later I reveal my user, uh, the two usernames I'm going to alternate between is Pi and Desktop. And Desktop is left over from my introduction to Linux. So thank you, Steam, for all, anything the Linux community might say about Steam not being completely open source. They did, you know, they do help bring, uh, they do help bring converts. I mean, so there's that. So, because, uh, uh, you know, when, I, when you get started with Linux, you want to do something fun. And so you're going to play games and, you know, you want to see how much of your library you can play. And then you've got Proton and all that stuff. So they're doing a lot of good. And I, I don't know why this is brand new, freshly installed from Raspbian. Why they're starting off with the light on top, because you think that they're selling the fours series now. And what, that's 64-bit OS. So why are they doing? Why are they leading with the 32-bit? I, I guess because it's universal. So in this tool, you just uh, select the OS and select the uh, card you want to overwrite, and it warns you that your data will be overwritten. And I'll kind of I'll pause it until that's done. You can eject the micro SD card and plug it in to your uh, Raspberry Pi. So, anyways, this is on the old Pi. So I'm, I, I realized, and I'm not sure if I'm just because I'm not using the right power cables or what. <clears throat> I kept having problems, and all, all I'm doing is I, <coughs> I have an extension cable that I run my. Oh, here, I, here. I'm used to using Linux to do stuff. Just use Notepad and delete it. I ran, if you ever run into that remote host identification and you know that it was you that caused it, you can just, I just remove my host a lot here in my home environment, my known host, just like that. If I was on Linux, that command would work. I end up using Notepad. Um, so anyways, what I'm using, I have an extension cable, uh, uh, for 
that, that I'm powering one Raspberry Pi off of the old Raspberry Pi 2, which what didn't wasn't so beefy on the power requirements. And then I have another one that I'm plugged into one of my node computers that I'm gonna use in my cluster and that we're setting up now. And it's just plugged into the Bluetooth or the USB 3 slot on that. And I don't know, I, I try to use the GUI mainly just out of laziness, not because I wanted the overhead. Um, and it, it kept running in a power requirement issue. Um, it, so I, I just go, go with the light if you can. Uh, all you have to do is, I'll, I'll show you the commands on here. You just have to enable uh, SSH uh, and figure out the IP address and then you can go into it. So what am I doing? Okay, now I've got the new, so this is the new freshly installed Pi. Let's see, I don't know, because I'm not set up to show you, to show you the screens yet on the Pies, I might have to just verbally talk that through and how I set up the SSH, uh, how I enable those. It's just, it's just pseudo system control, enable SSH and then pseudo system control, CTL for control. Uh, start SSH. That's, uh, that's all you have to do. All right. So here I'm, co I am copying. Oh, I showed you how to, I'm using nano. Nano, the keyboard shortcuts are control O to overwrite. I held on shift and, uh, selected down and I'm rewriting my engine X config. And, um, and then I hit control K just to cut that out. And now I'm showing you how I'm using, uh, I'm using my version control of the wiki over there. And, uh, this is pasting over from my cloud setup. So you, I'm going to overwrite these. And by the time you look at this, it'll be in final form. So I got question marks there because it's like, you know, whatever you were what and I'm assuming you're you're see it's like right there it's like how how what level do you actually want to get at you know because if somebody doesn't know <coughs> their IP addresses I, don't know. I mean I don't want to be mean but like you, you have to start somewhere <laughs> <laughs> have to be able to navigate that before you get into Kubernetes. <laughs> Not that it's, it doesn't have to be like years, but <sighs> all right. So there, okay. There's the two command or no, this is. All right, so uh, so there I've created the load, the load balancer. And what I was trying to do is I was seeing if I could, I just want to make sure it worked because this is on a low powered Pi. And I was able to SSH in using, I changed my local port to 23 and then it bounced me to one of these at 422 and I was able to do it, so it worked. I was happy. Um, so I think you should just be able to do reload, um, but I just always just do restart and check the status. So you're gonna wanna figure out what your IP addresses are gonna be on the install and uh, write down which ones of mine you're gonna overwrite with yours. And usually a home network defaults to 192.168.0.something. So these, I'm gonna change to master here soon. Uh, they were, I, I had thought about setting up my pies as masters and I still think that would be a great idea. The only problem is that my, these two computers I, I have, uh, two, I do have two NIC, NIC cards on them. That's just the two ethernet slots on them. And so I was hoping to be able to have one for like incoming and outgoing and just, uh, I don't have a, you know, a high bandwidth network 
locally even, and um, I don't even think I'm at a gig throughout the house. I mean, well, no, I, I know I'm not. <laughs> I mean, even to half the computers, I'm not. So, anyways, here I'm going through and I'm changing, uh, changing using Nano etc uh, host name. Uh, and I, I know there's a command something like this system control set host name. I don't remember what it was. I think it's set dash host name. Is that what it is? I don't know. But you can do a little faster. So, um, I recommend so you don't get lost. What I was realizing here is I was just getting so lost with what I was in because I didn't make a little diagram in the beginning. <clears throat> so, so I'm going through and finally at least when I remote into something, if the host name is right, then I'll at least not make mistakes because I'll, I'll be work in a little balance. So, so bam, handle, all that, easy. and now we're pretty much right where Techno Tim starts. Like most people use it for. And in this directive, I have another directive, one called server. Okay, that so this is telling the server. I highlighted, I highlighted that because um, I'm not in Docker, but. You know, uh, I, I don't know why the assumption is you be running Docker. I, I, I know Tim has the, the whole Proxmox set up and he's been building on a series of tutorials, so I guess I know why. But for somebody just starting, like their home lab, I mean, I, I do have Docker, but I'm using it for something else. So here's pretty much where Techno Tim starts his video, and I am building this video to support his video. I mean, not at his request or anything, just because I thought there is some additional information somebody new to uh, these types of things would need in order to cross that bridge and have a success story. Link will be below and also on the wiki. So it, it, to me, it's easier to just set it up, not in Docker. So that's why I showed you that. You need that little line at the top if you're not in Docker. Port 6443, that's the port that Kubernetes will communicate over. And so on this load balancer- So even Tim right there, and I think this is like a year or two years ago that he made this, hints at the documentation isn't always right. And even that's probably understated. So once He's seven minutes in server, and just getting started, and I'm 20 variables minutes are into this narration. narration. And there are variables that be here. I have 33306 because I have a load balancer in front of that. And then the last piece, slap it, and now we're very, So all of this right here is installing K3S as a server. The next piece is us setting up a taint. And so really quickly, a taint is a way to... It's water. Well, it's actually easier to... Yep. Gotta hydrate with the coffee. All right. Okay, now that's that's all I'm gonna play with Techno Tim. So here I'm gonna make some mistakes. See, the problem is the documentation on this stuff isn't, at least wasn't right. So here I'm showing you something that took me like two days to maybe not quite two days. So right here you can see they've hard locked it. This is on the present repo to 1.25. First off, Kubernetes stuff is never written that way. So I'm going to go try and find how it's written. You know, it's at least going to be written. We'll go check out the releases here. It's going to be written like that. So then if you, you'll go through and I'll show you the error you get later. But so you, you, their documentation should have, and if someone wants to take the time to go fill out a, a, an issue, please do. Uh, uh, anyways, so for that second line, you need to, we're using, K3S version 1.24.7. Um, and uh, I'll show you the error that you get if you don't do that later. And I'll be like, ding, 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 there it is. All right, so here I am. I'm trying my first thing. I exported the environment variable K3S status store endpoint, and I'm trying to run it, and this is gonna fail because of all sorts of things. You could find out all my issues all right so it actually i think it worked it kind of acts like it worked but then you get this it doesn't look right 
So, but yet it says master ready. And I'm trying to remember what the reason why this, well, number one, I'm doing it as root. And this was because I still thought it was being sly and not revealing a super secret username of desktop. So that could have been why. I've got some question marks there because I'm frustrated. Explain affinity. So now I'm going to go try to paste that over. And this is great. And this is why this guy is kind of meant to be like a companion. Because hopefully I'm going to make more mistakes than you do. And then you can feel good about yourself. <laughs> so. Um, and if you make more mistakes than me, then don't worry. <laughs> I've done, been there. So don't worry. These are not my actual keys that I have posted anymore. That part I do I just keep, keep secure. Um, though for a demo, that wouldn't matter anymore. So when you run that, you get that token and you, you're going to want to paste that token into the next command that I have available on the, on the wiki and it's going to fail. So, and obviously you would replace the password when you set up the database and I'll, I'll go back through, you know, I probably already edited that and made that a little better than just my rough live narration. So slowly pacing this in, I don't know why it's taking me so long. I'm using it faster than that. I just wanted to show you, so there was all the stuff he was talking about. <coughs> um, now this command is different than what he shows you on the video and it's from the docs and I had to play around with it a little bit I think to figure out exactly what the command was I you know sometimes I wonder if that stuff is like a lot of the times I read docs and they're they're vague I'm like is that on purpose so you have to pay for support That, that would be cynical. All right. I'm trying to figure out what I'm on now. Okay, yeah, the token command was different. And I think that's, that was the one, the one area where I thought maybe I messed up is you know you have to get the string this you know once you know the string it's super fast but i think bouncing from the videos i'm watching and the different docs you know there's no consistency things change so now i'm just got so frustrated it's not connecting my my second master isn't talking to my first master now i'm going to go dive in i have my sql workbench installed and I'm going to connect to my MariaDB 10.5 cluster and I rec you know I, now I'm starting to get wise okay I need to start remembering all my server names details and stuff because then just I had started to realize I can't just keep track of it all in my head so we're going to connect over there and we're going to take a look at what that little peek inside what the database looks like that uh, k3s sets up They say continue anyways. Oh yeah, and I wanted to name it. As you do. Yes. So there it is. And we're gonna have fun with this later. It could have fun with I didn't even realize it was kind. K I N E. I'd like to know what that stands for. So, um, right now, 
I expected to be able to do something in here. <laughs> I had no idea what it was. But I'm looking at So <laughs> I'll do a little bit more research and uh, and then I come back and I'll show you at least one more command that, I, that you can run um, that I'd gotten from. Uh, so there, there's the command. And I'm looking at Bootstrap. Yes, that right there, that bootstrap is that is supposedly a uh, not maybe it's hashed. It's a condensed version of the key. So I, I probably shouldn't even show that to you if I was cared. But uh, um, I mentioned it there. So there's the link, and I'll have I now have issues online, and you can find this if you care to dig through the history so there he said you know that's where they're talking about uh, what to do to try you know I was trying to figure out why I couldn't get one node to talk to, why I couldn't get one master server to talk to the other master server and I end up just blowing out the database because it was not going so now I'm getting this 509 certificate not signed by authority so one thing that you'll realize, <coughs> that I'll realize shortly here, and this is how you uninstall it. That's one nice thing. It's pretty easy to uninstall and just go again. I mean, it's very easy. I'm not, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna down talk it. I'm, I'm really pleased with how easy it is. So here's where, okay. I'm like, okay, just drop the, I can drop it, right? No, because somewhere, on my server, I have a master still spinning. And it's it's gonna drive me crazy to, to try and figure out what's going on. Um, so let's see if I can talk about... So, so now the plan is to go through and reset up the database, essentially starting from scratch, from where we just were. And this is, I, I forget if you can even see the time down there. Yeah, I think this is day two. I was looking to see if it said AM or PM. So, and I don't think I've changed my pies yet. And that was what led to the second error. More than 10, okay. So I here I figure, one thing that I've learned here, see, and this is so weird because that works here. My SQL admin flush host works here. Later I'm gonna try and run it again, it doesn't work. Um, so this is this is a problem and I, I do give the codes, I, I've actually gone through and updated the docs to give you the codes. It's, I don't know if it's common to have a lot of SQL errors on uh, a cluster, but definitely you're gonna get 10 real fast and then you're gonna lose connectivity issues and then you're gonna think your cluster's broke and then who knows if you're gonna get around to setting up again. So it's good to know that one of the reasons why your cluster could fail is because of uh, too many database errors. Over, get over 10 of those, um, it's gonna block the IP. And so you gotta do that flush command to fix it. And here I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna just type in like an example just for us to to see how to how to help each other list some issues and errors that can be searchable. So, and then try and list the resolution. So now I'm going back through and I'm trying to reset up the, maybe this isn't the time so I believe why this doesn't work is because, unbeknownst to me, I still have a master pointing at uh, the database, and it, it, the second I created the database, it, the K3S database, it, uh, it populated it with bad information. So we're just walking you through all the highlighting all the commands we're going to run. 
So really, this is this. Is, once you have <clears throat> your servers set up, this is actually your start. So. So okay, here's where. But see, it's never that easy. You know, it's. I think there's a show out there. I have to link the name of the show. Maybe I'll pop it in the, the little bar at the bottom. So right here, look, I kept trying to drop that database and it wouldn't let me. Hold on, I'm talking too many things at once. So there's a name of a show out there that's about all the problems from getting, from getting something from point A to point B. And it's like an entire show about it. And he's like a trained agent of some sort. Um, Anyway, okay, that was a sidetrack. Uh, on here, so I, I keep trying to drop the schema and drop, you know, the table and it won't, it keeps, it doesn't go away. I'm like, where is it? What, why is this database not, why is this table not going away? So that's what I, this is what I was talking about. So I'm, I'm dropping some pictures here and here I am trying to put issues there, you know, help other people. Because you never know if you're not skipping, you're probably skipping around in my video. So now I'm going to figure out. And that sudo mysql user root may not have worked because I still hadn't sorted out the host name. Why that was going on. Which I do shortly. Oh, I thought, well, maybe I just need a good old reboot. So I think at this point I, I realized that one of my masters was still spinning. And uh, essentially every time I delete it, the master would reconnect to the server. And I think it was getting these uh, error reading communication packets or something because it was expecting a database there and, and somehow it would try and recreate the database. So no, no matter what I do, <coughs> K3S kept showing up. And I just had to uh, uninstall it, and that's why I uninstalled everything. One more time, rebooted everything, and then uh, finally the database would drop. Caesar, right there, I believe that's not working because I just needed to sudo super user sudo su and then run just the MySQL admin flush dash host as root and then it would have worked and we could get a hint of why that is when we're in the database coming up. So yeah, if you figure out what your hosts are going to be named first, then you can save yourself all this headache. So see right there, it's trying to run the same command and we know why it doesn't fail because it has to be ran as root. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Okay, now I'm in the right server, so that's going to work. I didn't know because it's called Meridian. So I figured since we came all this way, we'd go ahead and set those max connect errors, change them from 10 to 10,000. I don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm looking for the flush command. Okay. Thanks to Michael SQL 5. So now I did a flush command. So flush host. And I'm just, okay, and then Saiful drops us these commands. And I, I there's, it's, you know, please, if you're a database person, tell us what we need to do here. Um, you know, I, I've read that, especially like these, these connection things, they used to be a security feature and now it's just basically useless for, well, use this, but it's not that big of a deal for security. I mean, because there's another place that actually triggers the the block. So, anyways, I'm pasting the commands that I know thus far. If there's better commands to prevent the K3S from blocking your host at the database level. Let us know. It's just, you know, preferably just drop an issue. And now one last time we'll go through and create the database. K3 
okay, run these commands to create database K3S, uh, grant the privileges to use your brancher by that password, and uh, our K3S data store endpoint. Okay, so now I'm finally, so here we are. What are we? We're halfway through. And it takes so long just to get everything right. You, you, set up your, you set up your load balancer, you set up your database. And, and then you get your command strings correct. And hopefully the documentation hasn't changed too much by the time you're watching this video to what worked when I was making it. And I, I hope to like yearly do one and improve the quality. So here, uh, I'm both master one and master two. I do the export to create the environment variable K3S underscore data store underscore endpoint. And then we're pointing it at our, to our database, which is at the 192.168.0.133. All right, so we've exported our environment variable on our master one and master two which points it to our database and then with the next curl command we're downloading k3s we specify the version we start up the server we taint it we say don't execute anything but uh, system workload on it and then we point it to our tos sand which is our load balancer okay we'll finally get to see a beautiful how it should how it should go so you just download it nice and clean I, I pause it briefly and then jump back because i have slow internet and then once you get it once it runs connectly nice and clean you should just get that little start starting k3s and then bam it will return then you can do q cuddle get node and then you'll see one master and then you'll get your token and then you'll paste your token into your second uh, into your second install curl string. Oh yeah, I thought maybe K3S would do it now. It's kind of interesting, you have two. You have K3S, cut, cube cuddle, and just plain old cube cuddle. You start off calling it cube control, and then when you like Kubernetes or K3S, then you call it cube cuddle. And with our environment variable already exported, the other curl command replacing the token. All right, so I just cut off the top because I didn't want to reveal my token, but I ran that command, I replaced the token, I used that specific dash dash token and not whatever. It's wrong, it's written wrong somewhere. And I'm not sure if it was just updated or what. Th this is what's working presently. So bam, looking good. Both look good. Let's do our K3S. Here I'm still hoping that I don't have to type sudo. Nope, you gotta do it, dude. There, that's a good, that's a good ad. Okay, cool. Yeah, yes. I'm so happy. This is 32 hours, I mean not 32 hours straight. Good. No, but that's... Okay, so now I'm trying to... I want to... I'm really liking this name and the host... And... Oh, it's because I get that error that it could not connect to host. It's because the 127.0.1.1 was still Raspberry Pi. I needed to change it. Fixing this, I believe, would have let us run those uh, MySQL commands from earlier. Was not... Per admin when I ran the command. Okay, so now see I had that error. Not right away. Yes, just what <laughs> do we? Could tell my mind isn't totally there. It just needed to do pseudo nano etc. Host. 
I think I wanted to make sure I hadn't mislabeled it. All right. Nope, you made the same mistake again. <laughs> pseudo. Aquamar, pseudo. There. Okay. Yep. Delete it. Name it properly. Bam. Control O. Control X. You got this. Control X. Good, okay. That's how you resolve that error. The unable to resolve host name or service not known. That's what you'll get when you start messing around with your host names and that's how you fix that little error. So this is the, you know, again, the dot 25 there, that's my load balancer, yours will be different. Um, okay, now you get to see some fun stuff with Steam. <coughs> so essentially my big, my node, which has like graphics cards on it. So I remote into it using, I just set up Firefox or something. And now I remote it into my Linux environment, my Ubuntu 20, uh, which I also have Teams on. And I'm pasting the commands that I need. Again, that's not my token, <coughs> so. I do accidentally leave it on the screen here. Big no no. Not really. You're hacking around my network to teach me a lesson. All the important stuff would still be ciphered. You could look at family pictures. So. As you can see, you know, I run Python over there. Anaconda, Anaconda. So that's not my token. And I'm gonna, I'll go paste my token off screen. And then this node, it's a slightly different command on how the nodes join. And I'm joining my node to the cluster, and I've just shrunk it to just show you the little view. And bam, done. And I was hoping that I could run kubectl there. Oh yeah, right there. That's where, here in fact, I'll stop right here, because I want to. Okay, right, because it's not going to work, because you're on a node. K3S might have worked. You want, you know, you're going to want to set that up on a proper, I, I, I run a Linux subsystem on Windows <coughs> to set up that local cube cover. So sudo kakoto git node, type in your password. Yay! So at this point, we could just be probably just do kubectl proxy and go look at our Kubernetes K3S cluster. <clears throat> um, what am I gonna tell you? I feel there's something important you must know. The image of what? Why am I pasting that? Oh, <clears throat> all right. So that's what you, this is from Tim's, you know, let him share his keys and then redo his server. I would, I do that twice. So anyways, that's what it'll look like. That's what you need to know. So when you run that cube config, I, so here I'm copying my existing one that I'm talking up to the cloud and now I'm renaming it. And don't forget to change the load balancer. So you'll, when you run that command, uh, the, the, the one that gets you the k3s.yaml, go paste that into the 
cube config right there. And then, and then you can run it. And this is me on my, see, you, why didn't you do your load parameter like you said? Okay, so if you've, if you've changed the load balancer in that one area where I highlighted it and you got your keys right, then now you can run it from your Linux subsystem. Again, you know, haven't covered that yet. By the way, here's where I began making a huge mistake. This is gonna lead you down your second rabbit or 20th. I'm gonna try to do like a fun countdown <coughs> of all the mistakes. And uh, this is a big one. This was a huge time suck. If you leave off host name, it's a problem. And if you use local host, it's a problem. And we're gonna find out why. And that'll be a good time for me to pause it and dump this microphone card to the computer and then start fresh. So anyways, that's gonna fail. I think I'm gonna fast forward this because this part gets to be really tedious. And I mean, this is the stuff, see the tough thing is this is, this is where you could lose motivation to get your home cluster set up. And, cause you, you know, especially you don't have, if you don't have the confidence of having one working, like if I hadn't had it working in the cloud first and hadn't failed doing other stuff in the cloud like 80 times, then no, no exaggeration. Then, you know, it's all that struggle that gets you the confidence to and the tenacity, you have to be tenacious to push through and finally get that, the home lab environment set up that you want. So I'm not sure why I'm thinking I need to look at the cube config again. Oh, I'm trying to check the directory of the cube config because I wanted to make sure See, part of the problem is, and you, you're, you might be like this, where you've ran Kubernetes somewhere else. So you're gonna have like a local home install already. So you don't really know what, what you're supposed to set up. You know, which, uh, I mean, what I've found is, you know, I kind of just ended up running through most of the commands that you do for a default install anyways and if i already had it on the local machine it would just say oh you already have it no need to run it but more techie so i'm looking for that dashboard.admin.user or slash you know what i'm saying the thing i have highlighted there so at first I thought, oh, it'd be great to drop it into this 100 days of home lab site. And then I was like, uh, no, because you, you want that to, I mean, that's for the site. So now I'm like, okay, well, my wiki is something that I'm controlling. So I switch over to my wiki and I was figure, and I'm not planning on pushing these changes, but at least I have some compartment to drop things that I can, you know, logically link in my mind later. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna drop this dashboard admin into there because like, like you saw, I wasn't able to find where I'd done it previously when I set up my cloud cluster. And I know I, I've created these and I don't know where they are. So I'm creating them again. And you know, watching Tim's on this part is good. Because, you know, pretty much once you're once you're here, and that's why I've got a very short amount of video. Well, not super short, but, you know, we're at the tail end of it. Because the last part is just if you've named your host name wrong. Of course, no one tells you. I tried to search, you know, what to name a local Kubernetes cluster. 
because if you're gonna go try to, uh, what's the tailspin? I mean, what you're gonna require people to do tailspin to have a, you know, you want to just be able to do it with your Excedra hose. And I could not find anywhere where people would say, this is what you name your Kubernetes home cluster. So I just named it brancher.localhost, which I haven't even gotten to me yet. And it doesn't work out so good. So now I'm running through, pretty much I just plow through the commands, trying to, and what's funny is you'll find different orders. So it's like Tim's video does one order, the K3S docs and Rancher do a different order. And I should, I think that's, I don't think that token really matters, but this is a good time to pause it. All right. Have I started recording? Let's see. There we go. Recording. Let's get back on this. All right, so you also won't be able to just type in that domain. You've got to, because this is another area sticking point because lots of places will just say, do that. It doesn't do anything. It just takes you to all the APIs. <coughs> and I guess what all those are are actually endpoints you can visit. So that's what you needed, that one, that URL, and that's in there. So then you grab your token. You paste it in. And uh, you may lose your screen. So sorry, one thing I realized, and I mean, I know it's not as bad as it could be, but I, I think I need to increase my browser zoomed in size even when I'm doing these high-res visit videos <coughs> all right so now I couldn't find the namespace like what was it there it is it's kubernetes dashboard why couldn't I see it like oh wait there's a scrolly wheel there it is See, in Rancher, it's not the scrolling wheel, it shows you, it just shows you all. Which is why we're gonna do Rancher next. So at that point, we have our, our Kubernetes cluster up for K3S. And uh, that would be good enough for some, but not us. No. So we've ran those commands, various orders, What am I doing here? Oh, I'm still fooling around with the no host name. Okay, I'm wanting to reorder. It's so annoying. It now copies the code, those three markers for the the markdown for I'm putting code in and so it's so it I accidentally comment out I accidentally messes up all my formatting it's so frustrating I wish I could just tell it not to do that I'm, I'm perfectly happy doing that myself Don't try and think for me, no? Like. What am I doing? Part two, all right, is where we solve Rancher. So essentially, what I was thinking from the error that I had is that
that it was because I had I didn't have Cert Manager installed on on the cluster yet, and that I mean we did need that, um, but the error ended up being because it's just we didn't have a host name, which is odd because the docs <coughs> don't see what what you end up finding is I'm going to go through and say, all right, no one's telling me what host name do I put in for a local cluster where I don't have DNS set up. I just want to use my local Excedra host file. So what do I do? And um, and somewhere in one of the docs it said, well, it defaults if you don't put in a host name to ranger.localhost. And that ends up being problematic because browsers don't like localhost. They kind of have that hard coded. So here's a link to the docs, you know, I'm, and you'll, you'll see that there, there's like some orders. I can't, I don't know for sure what order you're supposed to do all this stuff in. To try and follow the docs would be what I recommend. Compare that to Tim's video. What's funny is I still haven't quite figured out because other times where I've used Helm, you can just, you can kind of add the namespace before or after, it doesn't really matter. So some of the stuff I guess maybe doesn't matter. I would like to, would like to know the best practices. Gotta run that Helm repo update, that's a big one. Don't forget. Happy humming. Okay, so here's our command again that I thought we had to run. Oh no, that's for cert manager. This this will work. So this is kind of getting caught up on all the commands. At some point, well, no, I end up setting that up on my cloud provider. I have the Nginx. I, ha I have a, yet another load balancer set up just to route port 80 and 443 using the stream option. So there you go. That's what it looks like when Helm successfully installed something, which is a victory at this point in the deployment. What time does it say? Look, I'm at AM. This is 12 hours later. You can kind of see it cut off there at the bottom. Last time I did a time check, it was one. So right here, here's the docs. And I get that it's somebody's fork. And maybe they were, I, I don't know if this was ever an actual, that is not a good practice on uh, because when you, I'll, I'll curl, I'll be able to curl to that and see it, but I'm going to spend the next two hours, not live, but like trying to figure out a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to flush the DNS and all this nonsense. <coughs> it doesn't do anything. You've got to, um, well, I know, I mean, it, it does what the commands do. But it, it's not going to fix the problem because the browsers, both you know, Edge and Firefox are the ones I tested, are hard coded to do local host for something else, and like only buried on some, not Reddit. So there, that that installed. So and you can see now I'm supposed to go to rancher.localhost.dashboard. And uh, and it, it says to copy the key, but actually the the first command that you run will give you a key and it will auto generate a password. It like uses the API to enter the key in a hashed form, I think. So here I go. This is what this is all. If you this is what you will be able to do if you just do what what I ended up doing, which is 
just do like my dot rancher dot internal. Just do that instead of rancher dot localhost. Cause that the browsers don't like that localhost. But I think it's it's because it's hard coded in the browser to probably go to 127.0.0.1. And there's all this stuff, HTTPS, DNS over HTTPS, and all these other things. I'll kind of fast forward through some of this just to show you the, the problems. All right, so you can see I was able to ping it. I try and go to it, you know, it's just gonna... And what's frustrating is, you know, I'll curl to it and curl to the HTTPS and I'll get a certificate when I'm curling. I, and then it, it doesn't register here. I can pop in anything on the port side, nothing happens. All right, so this is good. Um, here I'm gonna show, I'm on my local install, unlike the cloud, I'm going to use just one load balancer to run both my, both the load balancer for my, uh, for my masters and for my rancher. And that's all I'm doing is I'm updating the Nginx config that we set up before with my new variables. I've got my 80s and my 10s. And I run it, we'll run, one fun thing is we'll run a command later and it will show the extra uh, Nick network interface card um, that I haven't been keeping track of, and it will it will give that to me. But I, I, for some reason, it didn't show me the the fourth one. Reload. It's easy to get a formatting error on the nginx config, but I got this one right. Good, everything's running just fine. So uh, what I was thinking is, oh, you had to have that in order to have it work. And no, that's not it, no. It's because it's local host. So I'm not gonna make you suffer through this too much. I'm not trying to make you suffer at all. I'm just... <laughs> I, I'm trying to, I don't know what I'm trying to do. I think I'm more just wanting to make sure I'm not going to skip over something that might be important. <coughs> See right there, we know right there that we're talking to Rancher. You know. Because I should at least get that. I should get a little error that says 404, page not found. And I think what the, the frustrating thing is it's such a blind error because it's... It's again, people making decisions for you that 
maybe you don't want made. I mean, it's my local host. Why are you deciding how to do my local host? My local host. And it'd be one thing if you could just change it with a setting. You can't. Not that I've found. If you go through, I even go into the advanced Firefox setting and mess with the DNS. So here's where you run a command. Um, kubectl get service all namespace o dash o wide and tells me where the load balancer is right there. And you'll see two more. It's it's weird that it doesn't have the the main master in there. So you could technically have all of those. And maybe I should go. I should probably go back and re-add it because I'm delete the the one that I know is there the the dot 80 and then I end up only having three in here so here this is the small stuff that you might get missed if you skip ahead so I think you would want to leave that 80 in there if you know that it's a proper master port and I think what you can do here is you could host like you could let let your your masters use one of the NICs and then the other NICs you use for rancher if you had four four NICs, not eight four. And I, this is just what I got from Techno Tim. I'm not sure if that's the best practice. The, the timeout might be a little long on that actually, because I know on my cloud server, especially when I was trying to see how low I can get the specs to save on cost, which is again why we're doing a home lab. Um, it, the masters, were, if they were to crash a lot, it would stink to have that five second timeout. Maybe also be good. So there, I finally set up the Nginx, or, you know, we started it, and still nothing. So then, after this, I'm gonna go try and flush the cache. I, I think I'll just skip forward to the end. So I'll, I'll flush the cache, I'll run a few other net commands, um, I'll do some searching, I'll go to, uh, to some Firefox commands, N none of that stuff works because it's both browsers have local host hard coded. So I, you might have been able to do something with dot local. Um, what I found when I was setting up Docker, I think it was, or maybe Docker does it itself to and I was trying to set up my Windows 10 subsystem. Uh, it you saw me just rubbing my neck because it's still stressing me out. This this was this was painful. <laughs> the uh, the the Docker set up the uh, it was like do Docker dot internal and of course anytime you can stick with the nomenclature do it so that's why i said so it's my dot rancher dot internal uh, that's what i'm going to suggest i'm going to throw that out to the world you know that should be the you know what people use in my humble very humble opinion born from suffering okay so that's it i think i'm just going to skip ahead to the end of the video see fast forwarding so here okay so right there I'm in so I'm in Firefox about colon config DNS and someone said hey look at the network DNS offline dash local and toggle that and that'll that'll fix it and I think somewhere on there there's like one tiny comment that says, oh, browsers just don't like localhost. Like that, that's, that's the clue. Browsers don't like localhost. Anyways, okay, bam, got it. 
Okay, let's back this up a little bit. It's a little bit more. So one last time, going in there, you'll see the, the host, and that, by the way, I'm using Visual Studio Code. A lot of just because I don't like to be splashed with white all the time. Uh, gives me a headache after a while. Um, so we, we, that's where you change it on your Windows, if you're on Windows. And um, you'll have, the nice thing about Visual Studio Code is it can automatically go into admin mode. So bam, and to overwrite the etc. host file. So bam, you get the warning, which is normal because it's self-signed certificate. And just in case you're curious what that looks like in Firefox, you can go click uh, that and then don't, don't hit that. Hit more information, view certificate. And you can see your, your it should still be encrypted. Um, so you're, you're technically, it says it's not safe. That's, of course, we all know them just, that's just a whole different conversation. Which I'm not prepared to position. Well, I am prepared to position myself, but I'm not prepared to speak to it. So you keep, you keep refreshing it and you'll see you get different passwords. So I don't have to, I don't have to care about you seeing this password because that's not the one I use. Not that you're gonna hack into my network. So bam, you're in, you finally get in. Yay, we're in, Rancher works. And then we could do a deployment. We'll do more deployments. This is my first 100 days in a home lab. The first day took two and a half days. <laughs> so. <laughs> so wish me luck going forward. I plan on showing uh, the, one of the next few things I wanna show is I want to really focus on my home lab journey on doing, um, just trying to live up to the hype, the power that Kubernetes is supposed to be, you know, this whole, um, you know, uh, just as a skilled worker, you know, we were supposed to be approaching a point where someone with not, not much more than, well, no, you're going to have to have a lot more than typing skills, but, uh, like, so we'll, we'll be installing cube apps, but the dream is, you know, you've got a skilled, a certain amount of skills and you can do powerful stuff. And then that, you know, the give and take is our, you know, our developers are going to be out of business or our developers is going to be able to do what they'd like to do, which is code and do developer stuff. And then you have a whole different group, a whole different layer that handles like the customer interaction part and they're interfacing with the customer needs. And then if they can then get that information back to the developers in the way that we like to be presented information, um, behind the scenes that that could be good. And you know, it could be, it could be streamlined. And I, I think, so that's kind of, you know, in, in video game world, I try and think of myself and try to be a technical artist. So it's like for, for this, you know, I kind of, as a developer, I, you know, I'm not like a hard coder guy, like that can just pound out code. I wish. Um, but, uh, but I can, I, and I'm not a customer service person, but I, I try to be in between where I can, I can do both and, and I try and understand the trends. So anyways, that's, that's kind of where my niche is trying to be is show how to use something like this to do it at home, do it, you know, pro at the prosumer level, do it at the small business level, and then plat be able to launch yourself into enterprise and roll these out into an enterprise uh, world if you if you need to. I mean, that's the great scalability. It goes from home to enterprise. 
and that's the dream. And that's that's what I want to show. I want to show rolling these apps out with you know, hopefully stumbling. I mean, stumbling, showing some roadblocks, and uh, and so the next video, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Um, you know, I want to get this channel going and uh, show you guys some cool stuff and try and really show you the power of where this technology is because it's it's getting good. All right, I'm going to close that out here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.